Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan Zmaschan. And this is a question that I'm going to answer now upon the request of one of my students who is asking me um, about this question from... This is from an endotopic worksheet that I made for my Cambridge um, class um, from the 9709 International A-Level syllabus. And this is about quadratics and it applies to at Excel as well, but I've kind of adapted the question a little bit because um, it's got something to do with functions as well, which we haven't gone through at the point at which I gave them or give this worksheet. So this is actually a bit different from the actual question that you'll find. And, um, you know, I'll answer the functions part of the question later, but I've changed the question a little bit, okay, slightly, um, in order to just give them some practice on quadratics. So this is for the end of topic worksheet, it's question number four. On, um, this is on the worksheet number two, quadratics for the C C A I E um, course, and this is uh, based upon a question from May June two thousand fifteen, um, and the question says the function f is defined by f of x is mapped to two x squared minus six x plus five for x is an element of all real numbers. Now some of this stuff um, we're going to be going through very shortly. Those of you who are in my class and we haven't got to functions yet. So you can think of it right now as y equals 2x squared minus 6x plus 5. Okay, it says find the set of values of p for which the equation f of x equals p has no real roots. Okay, it has no real roots. So we, we see this is a quadratic equation. It's in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. And we know that if something, if, if it has no real roots, okay, um, yeah, if it has no real roots, that means um, there is basically uh, no solution. Okay, so first of all, let's let's make it f of x equals p. So 2x squared minus 6x plus 5, you have to equate it to p first, and then we make it say equal 0. So 2x squared minus 6x plus 5 is equal, uh, minus p is equal to 0, sorry. Plus 5 minus p is equal to 0. So here we have a quadratic equation now. This is a quadratic equation, and it says equals 0. Okay, so now we know that when a quadratic equation um, has no real roots, then the discriminant is negative. Now, the discriminant is something which tells you how many roots a quadratic has. As we know, the quadratic formula x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, the discriminant of a quadratic equation is this part which is underneath the square root sign. That's the discriminant of a quadratic equation. So this discriminant, this, this part of the quadratic formula, this part which is underneath the square root sign, this is called the discriminant. Why? Because if this, if this part is positive, you'll have minus b plus or minus something over 2a. So you have minus b plus something over 2a, which would be one solution, and minus b minus something over 2a, which would be a second solution. There will be two distinct solutions. And if this is zero, You'll have minus b plus or minus 0 over 2a, which will just be one answer. That's called a repeated solution, just one answer. And if this is negative, then this will be undefined. The square root of a negative number is undefined. It's not a root, doesn't give you a real root. So therefore, this will have no solution when, okay, has no real roots, no real roots when b squared minus 4ac is negative. So... If we have a quadratic, you have ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So a is the coefficient of x, b is the co x squared, sorry, b is the coefficient of x, and c is the constant. So in this case, a is going to be 2, and b is going to be negative 6, and c is going to be 5 minus p. So we know that b squared minus 4ac, okay, has definitely got to be less than 0. It has to be negative for this to have no real roots. So what we have to do is solve this inequality that we're going to get. So b squared, which is negative 6, so negative 6 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is 5, minus b, has to be less than 0 for this to have no real root. So we've got to just simplify this a bit. 36, you have minus 4 times 2, which is minus 8, times 5, minus p, is less than 0. So we got here, um, let's, we've got 36 minus 40 plus 8p, is less than zero. Yeah, so you have 36 minus 40, which is negative 4, plus 8p is less than zero. So 8p is less than 4. So p is less than 4 over 8, which is a half. So when p is less than a half, 
okay, that's the set of values of p for which the equation f of x has no real roots. So, you know, you can say p is less than a half. If you want to write it as a set notation, you say p is such that p is less than a half. You can say p is an element of all real numbers. But that's no problem. You can just write your answer like that. That's fine. Okay, so that's how, um, you know, you can determine uh, how many roots something has. You have to uh, basically use the discriminant that discriminates between the number of roots in a quadratic. Okay, so when you have a quadratic, you take b squared minus 4ac. If it's greater than zero, it will have two real roots, two distinct separate real roots. b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero. You'll have one root, which is like called a repeated root. And if b squared minus 4ac is negative, that's when you have no real roots. And that's what we have to set up over here. We have to make this f of x equals p. This is f of x. All right, we make it equal to p. And then we make it equal to zero by subtracting p from both sides. And then use the formula for the discriminant to get the answer. And there's the answer to part A, or part 1. Now for part 2, it says express f of x in the form ax plus b squared plus c, where a, b, and c are constants. So basically, we know that f of x is equal to this quadratic, which is 2x squared minus 6x plus 5. Okay, and we want to express it in the form a, a times x plus b squared plus c. So what we're going to do is we're going to complete the square. This is basically completing the square form. Now, in order to do this, I have to have in front of the x squared a perfect square number. Okay, in this case, it has to be a 1, because that's going to be a 1 there. All right, so I've got to take out 2, okay, from this um, bracket here. So I'm going to write it as 2 times x squared minus 3x. Now, I like to close the bracket there and leave that number on its own because I like to concentrate on these two terms. So 2 times x squared minus 3x plus 5, this is the same as that exactly. If I expand this, I'm going to get that exactly. I've just now written this with the x squared with the coefficient 1 inside that bracket. Now inside the bracket, I can complete the square because this is a perfect square number, 1x squared. So I'm going to write x. If there's a minus here, I write minus, and then I'm going to put something squared. Now I take this number and I write a half of its coefficient. So instead of 3x, I write 3 over 2. Now, if I expanded this, I'll get x squared, I'll get minus 3x, and I'll get, pl I'll get plus 9 over 4, which I don't want, so I'm going to take away 9 over 4, so you always take away the square of this number. Then I'm going to close that bracket as it's closed there, and then I'm going to put plus 5. Now, these two are exactly the same. If I expand this, as I said, I'm going to get x squared, I'll have minus 3 over 2x, and then minus another 3 over, 3 over 2x, which will give me minus 3x, and then plus 9 over 4, then taking away the 9 over 4 afterwards, leave me with this. So now I can distribute this 2 in these two terms, okay, without, of course, expanding this bracket again, because we don't want to go around in circles. So we have 2 times x minus 3 over 2 squared, leave it like that. 2 times minus 9 over 4, the 2 and the 4 cancel, leave you with 9 over 2, and then you have plus 5. Now we have to just add these two terms together. 10 is the same, sorry, 5 is the same as 10 over 2. So this is like 2 times x minus 3 over 2 squared minus 9 over 2 plus 10 over 2, which is going to give me plus a half. So I'm left with 2 x minus 3 over 2 squared plus a half. And there we have completed the square um, for this expression. It says express in this form where a, b, and c are constants. We don't have to write a equals and b equals and c equals. Um, we can if we want to, but we don't need to. It didn't say state the values of a, b, and c. It just says express it in this form. So we can see that we've got it in this form. And the a and the b and the c are numbers, constants. And that's fine. So that's the answer. That's f of x expressed in another way called completing the square. And we, you know, we can then use this to find out other things we need, which this question doesn't ask us to. So that's as far as we'll go here. Um, as I said, this is adapted from question number 11 from the May-June 2015 paper. And if in the functions uh, topic I need to answer this question again where I go through this paper, I will answer it in, in the way it's asked in the paper itself uh, separately. Anyway, that concludes this question. Um, I hope that was clear. Thank you for watching. Any other questions you need to ask, please do so. Um, you know, especially the students from the um, doing the endotopic worksheet. But in general, if you're watching the channel, if you have any questions from any of the past papers um, that I am, you know, teaching, then you're welcome to ask. Just send, leave a comment in the, you know, um, comment section. Um, other papers that you might want to, or other questions you might want to watch from this paper, which I eventually might get around to answer, 
you'll find in the playlist over here. Other questions dealing with quadratics from P1 of the uh, Cambridge syllabus you'll find in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and um, you can watch a video up here which explains how you can use my channel to find material that you're looking for, whether you're doing IGCSE, NXL or Cambridge um, A-levels as you wish, whatever material I have, the video explains you know, how you can find it in an efficient manner. Um, thank you for watching and see you soon.